Hello YouTube, it's Tiki Strinkets here, and today I have for you a new Polymer Clay tutorial. This is also a new Five Nights at Freddy tutorial. I don't think anybody else has done this yet, so yay! I think I'm the first person to do a tutorial for this one, so hopefully this will help you all out. This will also be for sale on my Etsy shop. I haven't figured out the price yet, but it took me 13 hours total to make, so it is going to be one of my more expensive items. But again, keep in mind, it took me 13 hours to make it, plus the cost of production. You know, not just making it, the product costs money too. And I'm not including the time I filmed this video and edited this video. Just the sheer time it took to make this. But like I said, right now this is a tutorial, so you could try to make your own. This is, I probably can't say this right, little bit, LOL bit. <laughs> From Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. I really liked him in the, what do you call it, the DLC, the expansion on the game. Where he like pops up randomly and he f just messes you up. <laughs> There's no other words, messes you up. This is going to be a pretty long tutorial, but stick with it because it's obviously very much worth it in the end. This came out amazingly. Before we get into the tutorial, I'm just going to do my usual, do the run around of it so you can see it side view. Here, I'm just going to do it like this. I think that'll work good. Yeah, that should work fine. I keep losing focus. There we go. That's the side view. The back view. The left side view. And the front view. And just a nice close-up of his face. Her face. I take it it's a her. Since it's got lipstick, I guess. I don't know. Alright, well, I hope you all enjoy this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome Five Nights at Freddy tutorials like this. I'm going to be making Marina. Marina? I can't say the name right. You're going to hear me say this at the end of the video because there will be another quick video segment at the end showing me gluing the sculpture together because I wanted to be thorough with that because I know that can be a little complicated at least for me so I'm assuming it'll be even more complicated for y'all but I want to make everything as simple as possible that's why I had to go step by step on everything and a video for the gluing session all right well oh and one more thing don't forget if this giveaway is still going on when I upload this video which it should be I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah. Don't forget, I'm doing a giveaway for the baby compact mirror right now. All you have to do is like my video and be subscribed or subscribe to my channel. And you can't miss an opportunity like that. It's a $16 value mirror I made for free. And it's baby from Five Nights at Freddy. Which, who doesn't love it? I'm wearing my Five Nights at Freddy shirt right now. And I should be wearing my bracelet, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> Alright, well, let's get into this tutorial now. Bye bye. See you at the end of the video. To start off, you're going to need the following clay colors white, black, silver, this Primo purple, and orange. I used a large thing of white, as you can see here, because I knew I was going to be using a lot. So, I mean, it's maybe about three packs worth of white clay. I went on ahead and cut out all the clay just in square forms. Then I'm going to take each individual piece and roll it out into circles. This will make your tan hands tired, so just take your time with this. Next, you're going to take the large body piece, well, the upper chest piece, and we're going to roll this out into a teardrop shape like I've done here. Next, you're just going to take your hand and at the palm center of your hand, press it down gently just until your hand touches the surface below it. And when you get done, it'll look like this image right here, nice and flattened on one side, but still rounded on the other. This is like my standard way of doing things for tutorials. Next, you're going to cut off the bottom and the top. It's easier to use a long blade like this to get a smooth cut. Next, you're going to take the, the bottom, the butt piece, <laughs> and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to press your hand on it, flatten it out until your hand touches the surface. Then, it's going to look like this picture here. By the way, the venue of where I record this at is going to change because this took me a long time to make, so the background and lighting will change a lot. Sorry. Next, you're going to take this piece and you're going to pinch it between your index and thumb, and it's going to look like this. Then you're going to line it up and make sure it's the same width as the upper torso piece. 
then you're going to cut that piece off like I've done here. And again, just to make sure it will fit together smoothly, just press them together, not hard, do not blend this, do not press it together hard, because you're going to take this back apart, like I've done here. Next, you're just going to take your long blade and cut the other round side off, like I've done right here. And then we're just going to set these to the side, and next we're going to start on the head. So you're going to take the round, the large round ball that was at the top and the small little cylinder that I had sitting on top of it for the main part of the head and the main part of the snout. First take, first take the large ball and we're going to roll this into another teardrop shape. Then just using something, a dotting tool, a blade or something, go ahead and indent the lines on the face where, use a picture for reference. I'm going to say this over and over, use a picture for reference for all the dimensions, or use this video, just something for reference. Then you're going to cut this in half just below the line, and then you're going to take that excess piece and you're going to roll it on both sides, instead of it being one-sided teardrop, it's like a two-sided teardrop. And then you're going to take this piece yet again, and you're going to press it down until your hand touches the surface, and then you're going to take it and you're going to put it underneath the top part of the head like I've done here, folding the pointed parts up. Then you're going to take a dotting tool, uh, it's about a small size, small or medium, and you're going to indent where you want the eyes to be. Use a picture for reference. <laughs> Next we're going to take the snout, again we're going to press it down, but don't use your whole palm since this is so small. I just use my index finger as you can see here. It's a lot easier. It's not necessary to use your whole hand. And then it's going to look like this right here. Then you're just going to take whatever blade or knife you're using and you're just going to cut off not 50% of it, maybe like 25-75%. You see what I'm saying? The ratio is 25-75% to of the snout. And you're going to take the larger half, kind of slice it out of bias so it'll have an angle to it. Oh, and at the same time use the extra to put on the bottom. This will make the neck. Then you're going to blend the neck like I've done here with the little metal tool to the side. Then taking the bias piece and sticking it right on the neck, blending that. You can go ahead and blend that together. Next, you're going to take two small balls of white clay. These are going to be the ears. You're going to go ahead and take two metal rods, cut them the size that you need, two metal wires, I said rods, and stick them into the head. Make sure they're equal length apart. Then you're going to roll those two small balls into teardrop shapes. Again, you're going to use your index finger to press down gently, like I've done here. Next, on the flat side, we're going to flip them over on the flat side, which I've done here, and very gently indent with your ball dotting tool, whatever you call it, <laughs> and you're going to indent it so it has the inside of the ears, that way it's three-dimensional. Then you're going to go ahead and take it and attach it to the ears, I mean to the metal wires. Don't glue this yet because we still have to do the orange part of the inner ear. Next, we're going to take the two thigh parts, is what I'm going to call them. You're going to roll both of these into teardrop shapes. And then, as we've been doing thus far, cut the ends off of both ends. Use a long, flat blade to make it more even, like I've done here. By the way, I do all the same colors at one time to make it to where I don't have to wash my hands as much. Next, you're going to make sure that it lines up to the torso. Don't glue this together yet. Pull them back apart. Just make sure everything lines up evenly. And then... Uh, I'm trying to remember what's next. Then we're going to take the two balls that are underneath the thighs. These are going to be the calves. I've kind of set them to the side in this picture. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll these out into like little cylinders slash log shapes. Again, we're going to take a blade and we're going to cut it off at both ends like we've been doing. I didn't use any exact measurements on this one. That's why you don't see a ruler. So just follow along as closely as possible. Then you're going to take the last two balls, and you're going to, these are going to be the feet, as you can see them here. Some of these pictures weren't necessary, but I, eh, I was trying to be thorough. Next, even though this is a really long video, <laughs> next you're going to pinch them between your fingers like a cylinder, I mean like a teardrop shape, and get them nice and rounded at one end. Then you're going to use your X-Acto blade or dotting tool to indent the toes, use a picture for reference. And this is what you have thus far. Now we're going to the upper body, and we're going to start with the 
upper arms. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Okay, now you're going to take the upper arms, do what we've been doing, line them up, and you're going to take your blade and cut it off on both ends, like I've done here. Oh, take some of this scrap clay, like those one little piece at the top left up here, because I forgot one ball of white clay. You're going to take it and go ahead and roll this out. I should have said this sooner that I forgot a ball, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you're going to roll this into a circle, and then you're going to cut the circle straight down the middle, cut it in half, as you can see here. And then you're going to cut the bottom parts off so it keeps like a 90 degree angle on one side but still rounded on the others like you can see here. And these are the little shoulder plates on a little bit. And as you can see I set them up there. I set everything where it goes to keep a reminder on what I'm doing. Now we're going to take the forearms. Again roll them out to the same thickness, same length if you can. If not go ahead and use your blade. Cut off the excess to make them the same length. Always making sure your joints line up perfectly and nothing's too oversized or undersized. Keep checking every bit of the way. Next, you're going to take this last ball of white clay, and this is going to be his hand. You're going to roll this into a teardrop shape. And like I said before, since this is a small item, just use your finger to press it down like I've done here. And next you're going to use your blade to just cut out each individual finger, you know, five fingers. This is the first time I'm attempting a real hand, so be easy on me. Hands are hard for me, even to draw them or to craft them. Next you're going to cut off the excess top at the part because, part at the top because that's going to be orange, not white. Oh, I forgot the tail. Duh. We're going to take one more ball for the tail, roll this out, just kind of like the headpiece. We're going to have it pointed on one end and not pointed, but you know, like a rounded part on the other end and that's what you got so far you can go ahead and cut the the flat part of the tail at a bias so to attach to the back of the butt very nicely this picture i just kind of turned it sideways so you could see it a little bit better oh and i cut off the excess cut off the white excess where the silver is going to go i'm sorry i should have said that anywho here's the primo silver i use go ahead and roll out this many amount of balls of clay i know it's a lot i'm not going to count it just pause the video I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, but not too long. It's already long enough. Now we're going to take the first two small balls using your back of your exacto blade. I use this blade for a lot of things, okay? <laughs> You're going to press this out and make this nice and flat. Make it the same thickness. Attach it to the bottom of the little arm pieces using a picture for reference. Use a picture for reference. Or use this video for reference to know where your placement's going. Now we're going to take two more silver balls. And we're going to cut these and make them like kind of like the shoulder pieces and you're going to stick them into the 90 degree angle on the leg pieces as I've done here well I mean the arm pieces I keep saying legs but this is the um this is the fat part of the arm <laughs> and then you're going to smooth it out by rolling it between your fingers to make sure it's well blended next take the big large torso cut these edges off kind of like a rainbow shape on both sides take two large balls of silver clay Roll them out nice and flat, make sure the same thickness, press them up against the empty parts of the segment of the body. You're going to take your blade and cut off the excess at the bottom, like I've done here. And to make sure the white and silver are blended together, roll it back and forth in between your fingers as long as you need to. This might take a while. It took me a while. <coughs> Again, that's my chair squeaking, I'm sorry. And this is what it should like once you get it to the right blending consistency. Don't blend them all the way together. Don't mush the colors, but you know what I mean. Make sure they look like they mesh. Now we're going to take another ball of silver clay. And you're going to flatten this down with your X-Acto blade again. This is going to be his little speaker on his chest. Just set, set it on the chest to make sure it lines up nicely. But do not glue it. Don't glue it yet. And then you're just going to go ahead, like I said, and take it off. Set it to the side. Next, we're going to start on the upper thighs. The thighs. That's what I was talking about earlier. I got ahead of myself. We're going to take two balls of silver clay. Again, we're going to cut them out. Make these weird little 90 degree angles with the rounded parts. Stick the flat ends together. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I've done here. You're going to take the blade again. And you're going to cut off the excess at the top this time. Like I've done here. And then you're going to take it, roll each piece between your fingers until it's nice and blended like it is here. 
Then you're going to take two more tiny balls of silver clay. You're going to roll these out nice and flat. This is a long narration. You're going to hear me drinking throughout this narration. This is taking a while. And then you're going to stick these to the bottom part of that leg, of the bottom part of that thigh segment. Here's another picture to show you where we're at thus far. Now we're going to take the calves, the lower parts of the leg, where we cut off, cut them in half, pretty much. And you're going to take two small balls of silver clay. <coughs> and you're going to roll these into, like, snake-like shapes. I don't know what the technical terms for these shapes are called. I need to look this up and see if there is. And you're going to take them, cut the excess off, and smush them to the white part. Then you're going to roll them between your fingers to blend them again, as I've done here. If it does get a little wonky at the top or the bottom, just cut them and make them flat again. Just make sure it's the same thickness on both. Next, we are going to take another small ball of silver clay. Oh, next we're going to take the um, speaker off his chest. I'm sorry. Next, we're going to take the speaker off of his chest, take a small dotting tool, and indent where the little dots are at on the speaker. Then we're going to take another small ball of silver clay, and this time we're going to roll this out into a very, very thin-like snake. As you can see here. And you're going to wrap this around the outside, the outside perimeter of the circle, and then cut off the excess like I've done here, blend it. And now we're done with the silver part of the clays. Now we're going into the orange segments on the clays. Again, not counting how many balls this is. You just need this many. <laughs> just pause the video, count it up. Alright, next you're going to take... I show two here, but you actually need to go ahead and take four. Put two inside the eyeball sockets and two inside the ear sockets. This is why I said don't attach the ears yet. That way you can work with this a little more easily. And roll your dotting tool or press your dotting tool to indent what you need. Then you're going to take two more tiny balls of orange clay, teeny tiny, because this is his eyebrows. You need this to be really, really small. Roll these out into teeny tiny little teardrops, and then you're going to stick the fat rounded end closer to his um, center of his forehead. I was trying to think of the word. And you're going to press this on his face, try to make sure they're lined up and nice and even. Then you're going to take another orange ball of clay, and we're making the top part of the mouth now. So you're going to roll this into a teardrop shape. Then taking your rolling pin or X-Acto blade or whatever you use to flatten things out, roll it out starting from the small end going to the large end. And then after you do that, you're going to take this piece and you're going to cut it in half about 50-50. And make sure this piece lines up with the bottom part of the jaw that we made earlier. So go ahead and set it on there just to make sure it lines up. But don't attach this. As you're going to see in the next picture, I've just taken it off for now. Right here. Again, I'm sorry this video is so long, but I wanted to be as thorough as possible for you guys, so I really hope you all appreciate this. <laughs> Next, you're going to take eye pins or head pins or something just small like that in metal, and you're going to cut them up into little itty bitty pieces. And taking glue, stick the little pieces into the glue just barely, and then you're going to take each individual piece and stick it into the bottom part of the jaw, like I've done here. Obviously, these are his teeth. Next, you're going to take his snout, and you're going to use your blade to indent where the little crease is. And then you're going to take a small dotting tool, and you're going to indent his little freckles. By the way, I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say it probably again. I forgot to roll out the black ball for his nose. I know, but I fixed it later. <laughs> Next, you're going to yeah, go ahead and attach that, glue it on. Then you're going to take another orange ball of clay, and you're going to remove the speaker because the silver speaker is on top of everything. And you're going to roll this out again, a double-sided teardrop, putting the fatter end at the top, the more narrow end at the bottom, then roll it on his chest using your X-Acto blade. Make sure this is really, really thin, because you don't want it to be too bulky. Cut off the excess on the top and bottom, and then you can just go ahead and put the speaker back on his chest now. You can go ahead and use glue to attach this too to make it more sturdy. Now we're going to move down to his lower torso. We're going to take his torso piece, and we're going to take another ball of orange clay, and we're going to roll this into just a one-sided teardrop shape, as you can see I've done right here. And you're going to take the fat round end and point it towards the bottom, and the narrow end towards the top of the torso, like I've done here. Again, you're going to take your blade, and you're going to roll it out super flat, but try to keep the lines really straight on the sides, as you can see right here. <clears throat> if it's not straight enough, you can cut off the excess. I do that later. But right now, you're just going to cut out the excess at the top of this piece. We leave the bottom piece on because he has a little 
tum tum <laughs> i don't know a little fat that hangs over i don't know what to call this but it hangs over all right now you're going to take two metal wires whatever color because you're not going to be able to see much of it i prefer silver though put glue on it and stick it together that way it's nice and sturdy now we're going to take three pieces because i want to be super sturdy sturdy <laughs> and shove them into the torso using glue on the ends and glue on the top ends and push well don't attach the head yet don't attach the head yet my bad just glue it into the torso and just indent it into the bottom next we're going to take the tail roll out an orange ball cut off the tip i'm a little behind on the video frame sorry now we're going to take another little orange that little orange ball and we're going to make sure it's the same size as the tip we cut off cut off it make it flat then you're going to take your blade and you're going to very meticulously cut out each little triangle on the end of this so it matches up with that one that we cut off and then you're just going to slide it into the tail like a three-dimensional puzzle piece right here and then use your fingers to roll back and forth to blend it together just to give you a different perspective on it i took a second picture right here sorry for my nails they're nasty i know i need to paint them and sorry for the bad quality on this photo just having a great video so far right <clears throat> anyways next little orange ball that's going to be the top part of the hand roll it into a teardrop shape you're going to press it flat with your finger, or you can roll it flat with an X-Acto blade like I've done here. Again, I started from the small end and worked my way up to the top end, going slow with a medium amount of pressure. Then you're going to go ahead, cut the little rounded end off, and attach it to the hand. And then you're going to take it, the narrow end, and you're going to pinch it between your fingers to kind of give it more of a hand-like shape. And then you're going to cut off the... The long end is what I'm going to call it and make it flat. Now we're going to take some of those teeny tiny balls you saw at the beginning. Five of them to be precise since there's five fingers. And you're going to roll these into little itty bitty teardrops. And then you're going to cut these teardrops in half. And just use glue. Use glue and glue them onto the fingers. Again, I know this hand is not perfect. But I'm working on it, okay? It's a work in progress. We're all learning here together. Next, you're going to take two orange balls of clay, two small ones, and this is going to go on the bottom of the silver balls, so we're going to use the X-Acto blade and press down again, making sure they're the same diameter as the previous silver balls. And then you're going to go ahead and press them on there like that. Next, you're going to take the feet and the last six teeny tiny balls that we made at the beginning of the video. You're going to take this dotting poking tool. If you don't have one of these, just use something to poke into the toes and make six individual holes. Now you're going to take the little orange balls and roll them in the teardrop shapes again, but these you don't have to cut them, you just stick the pointed ends down into the holes. That's why you use a pointed type tool. And there you go, that's the feet. Now I usually wait till the end to clean my stuff, but I went on ahead and cleaned it now because all I had left was the purple clay and that was very little. So I went on ahead and cleaned it all, and it took all those Q-tips to clean this. It took a lot. And I turned this sideways so you could see it better. I got this really good cleaned. It took a lot of Q-tips and a lot of rubbing alcohol. Next, now you can finally go ahead and glue on the shoulder pads and glue on the head. Now you can take the purple clay, the purple primo clay. I don't know the name. I cut it off by accident. Oopsie. And you're going to take... This amount of purple, well, you need two more small balls of purple for the cheeks that I did not include here. I'm sorry. I was trying. Now you're going to take two, put it on his mouth for his, I keep saying his, it's a her. Put it on her mouth for her lipstick. I'm assuming it's a her. I don't know. It's got lipstick. It might be a her. Now you're going to take the other three, and this is going to be the bow tie. See, it could be a him or her. You're going to make its bow tie. You're going to flatten those teardrops out. You're going to roll them in the teardrops, then flatten them out. Then you're going to connect them together. You can either cut the pieces off like I did or just smush them together. And then you're going to take the itty bitty ball and place it on top of that in the center. Then you're going to take your Loctite glue. I think that's the name brand something. Again, not sponsored. I just really like this glue. Put it on there and dab the bow right on top where you put the glue. Here's the two purple balls I forgot. Again, these are just going to make the cheeks, so just put them on the cheeks and then press them down flat with your fingers. And see, it came out perfectly. Now, we're going to go to the black clay, which again, I forgot the nose. I know. Now, we're going to take two black pieces for the eyeballs. Roll these out. They're kind of small. You don't want them too large. Go ahead and throw those in the eye socket. You don't really need glue for this one. Then, you're going to take the right forearm. And you're going to attach a 
ball of clay at one end. This is going to be his little hook for his hand. I just took one hoop earring and I'm just going to cut the bottom off and have the little pieces fall off and cut the tip off at the top. I'm just going to stick it down in the glue container and then just stick the long piece into his hand as you can see here and this is the product so far. And next I just took metal and stuck it in the ends of the um, calves and the end of the forearm and the end of the main arm. Now you're ready for baking. I just stick the metal in there for it to be a little more sturdy. That's just me. You don't need the metal. You can just glue it. Alright, we're getting near the end now. Take your black and white paint, because I like paint sometimes. Dot three black dots on the um, lower calves. I'm not good with anatomy here. I'm obviously not a science major. Then you're going to take the eyes and dot them with the white. Then you just let the paint dry, and after it's dried, you just go ahead and glue it all together. And that's how the finished product looks.